In this year alone, I released over 89 videos here on my YouTube channel, just demoing out different bass products from instruments to pedals, amps and cabs and everything in between. Open the front door to see us. And of all the gear that's come through the studio this year, some of it really impressed me. So let's just jump in and check out my top 10 list of bass gear for 2022. Coming in at number 10 is the Ibanez SR500E. These sound gear bases, seriously, they've always impressed me. For the value, you get so much for a very, very low price point, all things considered. And, and seriously, this instrument sounded great. The bridge pickup had just enough mid-range to punch through. Had a great pick tone. There was no problem with that bass cutting through the mix. At number nine, we've got the Seymour Duncan Studio Bass Compressor. And I think it's a really good compressor. It's easy to make things sound good, and it's really hard to fuck them up. And that's that's really important for compressors, because if you don't know what you're doing, you can ruin your tone pretty easily. And this thing just slayed on slap. So if you're looking for one simple compressor pedal to rule them all, I think it's this one. And number eight, we've got the Fender Player Plus Jazz Bass. All right, now check this out. I grew up in, in the 90s playing made in Mexico Fender Jazz Basses. Okay, this instrument smokes all the ones I grew up playing. It's, it's a fantastic quality instrument. So Fender, good on you for stepping up your game. It only took three fucking decades, Jesus. Whoa! It had a great sounding neck pickup. A pretty funky bridge pickup that was just great for pick playing. Such an icon. Yeah, they don't. All in all, it's a very well-rounded instrument and a very good standard if you want to compare other instruments to it. Number seven, the Phil Jones Bass PE5. pedal's got five bands of clean EQ. It was super functional. No matter what we plugged into it, whether it was like blues rock for some vintage mojo. And that top end lift, the zing that this thing throws on your slap tone. Woo! <laughs> Number six, we've got the Sterling by Music Man Short Scale Stingray. Now the Music Man sound really isn't my go-to tone, but this particular Sterling by Music Man, God, they nailed the sound of that Stingray and they made it really fun to play too, because I love short scale instruments. It's kind of like going from driving a semi truck to a race car. You can just, whoo, you can go anywhere on it. <laughs> And of all the basses that I demoed this year, I had the most fun playing slap bass with this one. Coming in at number five, we've got the Radial HDI. Now I know DI boxes really aren't that sexy and most bass players don't geek out over pro audio gear, but this DI box, holy shit, between the presence and the color knobs and that built-in smooth optical compressor, this thing is so versatile. And number four, we've got the Michael Kelly Element 5OP. This bass was super easy to use and dial in. I literally took it out of the box, played one rehearsal, and then walked onto a massive festival stage. I had no problems getting it to sound good whatsoever. <laughs> Trustworthy, solid, just a very good, decent instrument for very little money. <laughs> 
Number three, the quilter interbase. I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't even know what this pedal is, seriously. What would you say you do here? It's not an overdrive, it's not a distortion, maybe like an upper partial harmonic distortion or something? Who knows? I don't care, it could be fucking witchcraft. For a, it doesn't matter, it sounds good. Turn it on, plug it in, call it a day. Coming in at number two, we've got the Epiphone Jack Cassidy signature bass. As, as soon as it came in, I called up Billy over at Zounds. First of all, shout out to Zounds. And I told him, hey, you're not getting this one back. You're gonna have to pry this instrument from my cold dead fingers. We don't know what we're Believe it or not, the number one thing that impressed me the most this year was actually a piece of software. The David Eden WT-800 plugin from Universal Audio. This has gotta be hands down the best amp sim I've ever played. And super flexible too. I mean, the fact that they give you three different faders, you can control the 410, the 15, or the, the, the amp, the head itself. It's really customizable. And that's not something that amp sims are known for doing. So that's it for today. Actually, that's it for 2022. Thank you for tuning in this year. I appreciate you. We had a lot of fun and a lot of cool things are coming in 23, which you'll find out about, I think in about a week or so. Stay tuned, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and remember links to all the gear I talked about today, you'll find links to it in the description. So thank you for tuning in, have a fantastic rest of your year, and we'll see you next time.